So th thank you, Gregory, uh, to introduce my talk. And also thank you for the invitation from this wonderful program. And I'm Chang Zixie. Uh, I'm a postdoc at Kavli IPMU and uh, uh, Institute for Solid State Physics. And today I'm going to talk about the annihilation and the symmetrical criticality, symmetry protect criticality in one dimensional quantum many body systems. Okay. So maybe <laughs> there's some just cartoon here. This is a character representing the Institute for Solid State Physics. Quite cute. Okay, so uh, my talk uh, is based on two works. Uh, the first one is was done with with uh, Shinsei Liu in University of Chicago, who is uh, who was my PhD advisor, and uh, the other collaborator is Guillaume Cho. Now he is a assistant professor at the Pohan University of Science and Technology. And this work uh, was published la last May. And the second part of this talk uh, is based on our recent work uh, with Masaki and uh, his student Yuan. And uh, this is, uh, while well, the first work is, is about uh, the electron systems, or more generally, the fermion systems. The second work is about spin system, or more generally, the SUN spin system in one dimension. And uh, the second paper was just uh, online last, last month. OK, this is a mask. <laughs> OK, here's the outline. I will begin with some background of the material I would like to talk. And uh, then two examples are followed. So uh, I'd like to begin with the very fundamental questions, which is uh, the identification of the face of a generic many body systems. This is an important, but in general, hard problem. And quite often, symmetries play an essential role in uh, solving such kind of problem. And uh, so as, uh, associated with the idea of symmetries, there has been various class of basis of matter has been discussed. And the first kind is the most famous one. The, uh, the faces can be classified or characterized by the patterns of symmetry breaking, or the, the so-called Landa Ginsburg Wilson paradigm. paradigm. So uh, we can use the older parameters, the local order parameters to distinguish, to characterize a face. For example, the uh, we can use the SO3 order parameter to characterize a, a magnetic system, or using this U1 order parameter to characterize a superconducting systems. And there's the uh, older and the disorder phases, which uh, you might known well. And the second one is the so-called topological phases. And actually, there are several kind of topological phases, like the symmetry protected topological or symmetry protected trivial phases. This here, or they are more exotic phases, like the topological order phases, such as the fractional quantum whole systems that support uh, fractional excitation and also degenerate ground states. And for this symmetry protect trivial or topological phases, if there's no symmetry in the systems, actually the, there's only one phase, one trivial phase. The atomic insulators, for example, in electron systems. But in the presence of symmetries, we can, in general, have some exotic or some non-trivial topological phases, even we cannot use local order parameter to characterize these non-trivial phases. But 
these topological phases uh, cannot be connect adiabatically to an atomic insulators with the protection of symmetries. And uh, I believe uh, some or most of you have known this kind of uh, object. And uh, of course, there are several good uh, literature introducing these symmetry protect topological phases. For example, the first two are most fo more focused on the recent development of topological insulators and also topological superconductors. And where the paper by Sensio is more focused on their interacting SPT phases. And uh, the, the first one is more focused on the classification with various symmetries. And while the last one is from Witten, which is more focused on field theory aspect of SPD phases. Anyway, they, those are good. And, uh, and uh, understanding, e easy understand references. However, today, I will not talk about those, phase, those conventional phases, including the gap topological phases. Instead, I will talk about phases associated with incapability. What is incapability? This idea is defined regarding whether a system with symmetries can have or can be gapped into a trivial ground, trivial gap ground state. Here, trivial means unique and symmetric. And uh, this is not for a specific Hamptonian. This is in general for a class of Hamptonian, which we are allowed to add symmetric symmetry respecting perturbation around a specific Hamptonian. Right, so do you consider that H0 is the gapless spectrum here? Yes, okay. yes. And the, all, the total Hamptonian should respect some symmetries that we are interested. So trivial means gapable, and non-trivial means ingapable. And then maybe the most familiar idea is about the ingapability or stability of H states or boundary states of SPT phases. For example, uh, the stability of the helical H states of two two dimensional corner spin hole systems. So, the H state the is described by this uh, Dirac fermions, and uh, you can ask uh, is such H states is stable or not against uh, impurity or, or even more general interactions. So the, maybe the simplest, simplest gaping term we can consider is such kind of mass term. However, this term is not symmetric on the time real symmetries, which is the symmetry we are interested in in, the, in this system. So this is term is not allowed. But there are still some time reversal invariant interac interactions that we can consider. The first one is the, the forward scattering, while the second one is the unclick uh, scattering turn. But even when we consider these symmetry invariant uh, gapping turns, we found while the first one still keep the, the H gapless, the second one will spontaneously break the time symmetries on the H. And uh, this spontaneous symmetry breaking is important because we want to get the H into a unique gap ground state. But so this spontaneous symmetry is, is, not, what, is, is not what we want. Eventually, or, or to summarize, the H is quite stable against interactions and the disorders. In the sense, the symmetry is respected. OK, this is uh, some illustration of the incapability, the idea of incapability. 
where the edge state is associated with the boundary of some topological phases in one dimension higher. Today, I'm, I want to talk about the incapability of a purely uh, lattice systems without referring any topological gap block in one dimension higher. And I'm uh, more folks, I, I, I will talk about, I will be restricted to one dimensional systems. S simple examples include, like, like the spin system, for example, the spin one, Heisenberg interferometric model, which is gapped, as you know, there's a whole damn gap. Also, it's not integral model, but people believe there's a gap in this spin one Heisenberg interferometric system. Of course, as I say, we are not restricted to a particu particular Hamiltonian. We can consider a class of Hamiltonian, which belongs to the same phase regarding this incapability. For example, we can consider this bilinear biquadratic spin one model, which uh, includes this anti Heisenberg model as particular point here. And uh, this class of Hamiltonian is also gapable because, the, as we know, there's a trivial gapped point or the AKOT, which is integrable uh, in this model. Of course, there are some critical phase like, like this uh, spin one Takata Jun, Bob Jun point or this human light Switzerland critical phase. That's fine. The point is that while we vary the parameters of this uh, bilinear bicoquadratic model, eventually we can drive the system into a trivial gapped state. So I would say spin one model with translation symmetry uh, by one side is capable. How about the case of spin half systems? As you know, this Heisenberg model is gapless, described by the with Zuma Witten compound field theory as its critical university class. This is uh, integrable model. Of course, you can try to gap this Heisenberg model by some symmetry respecting uh, interactions or some uh, hopping turns. For example, we can consider this uh, Marjander Gauche model, which includes uh, nearest neighbor hopping turns or nearest happy nearest neighbor interactions. But also this Hamiltonian respect both the spin rotation and the translation symmetries. The Hamiltonian has a spontaneous translation broken phase. That is a dimerized phase. So as I mentioned, this spontaneous symmetry breaking is crucial, which means we cannot have a trivial gr gap ground state. Of course, this is one specific example of this spin half Hamiltonian, but it uh, signals that this spin half Hamiltonian with translation symmetry is somehow incapable. And uh, indeed, this is guaranteed by the so called Lipschitz matrix series for spin, for the spin systems in one dimension. And uh, this is quite general for a, uh, many body spin systems, which I uh, give the, a precise statement here. Any one dimensional SU2 antiferromatic spin chain cannot have a unique gap ground state if the spin per site is half integral. And if the large translation symmetry and the SO3 spin rotation symmetry are strictly enforced, and uh, this, uh, was, this statement was discussed in these papers. And the, first, the first one is, was in 1961. And uh, Athlan and Lip improved this statement and uh, somehow made some generalization uh, tw in 20, 25 years later. 
So here comes my questions. Given any one dimensional lattice model with both translation and the on-site symmetry like the spin rotations, example in, like the Hubble model and the Hessian model, which are interacting systems, <coughs> could we determine based on the symmetry and the microscope degrees of freedom of the model like spins, whether the system is get ingapable or not? If we can determine the incapability of the a given system, can we further constrain the low energy behaviors of the model or the phase that of can we gain some uh, constraint on the phase diagram of a cl class of model like the Bidina by quadratic spin model? So in this talk, I'm trying to answer these questions focusing on the case of the on-site symmetry being U1 and uh, PSUN is the project space show unitary group uh, that specify the spin rotation symmetries in general N. When N equals 2, PSU2 is equal to SO3, which is the most of them familiar spin rotation symmetry. Our approach to answer the question I have just addressed is based on the idea of the so-called non-matching, which is, was proposed by Terhoff, Gerard Terhoff, the anomaly in, in early 80s. And this idea we found is quite useful to enable us to obtain some fundamental constraints on the phase diagrams of a generic interacting or many body quantum systems. Of course, uh, their starting point is from field series, but eventually we found this also applied to lattice models. Here's uh, is some is the is the idea of our approach starting from a UV lattice model with a given on-site symmetry as well as translation symmetries. In the continued limit, we may have an effect frequency description of this lattice model. While this on-site symmetry is still some symmetry, or still the on-site symmetry, or to be more precise, an internal symmetry, the translation symmetry transmute to a trans uh, internal symmetry described by this uh, integer group. Actually, to be more precise, a subgroup of this integer group, like Z2, Zn, which is a subgroup of this integer group, because at a specific, at a specific, a specific critical point, we may see, for example, Z2, uh, as I will give you, an example about this uh, effect symmetry from this translation symmetry. So in the field theory content, if we have two internal symmetries, we can ask something. And uh, we can ask uh, if this, there is a conflict between these two symmetries. Conflict means if there is an anomaly between these two symmetries. Maybe these anomalies uh, is uh, uh, to understand the anomaly of two symmetries. A well-known example is the chiral anomaly. For example, a Dirac theory respect both the charge U1 and also the X show U1 symmetries. However, as you know, there, there is a chiral anomaly for these Dirac fermions. That is, if we couple the Dirac fermion to the U1 electromagnetic field, the actual current is not conserved. And this is the chiral anomaly, which means there is a conflict between this charge U1 and the actual U1 symmetries. 
a, a, a more precise uh, saying is that gauging one symmetry causes the breakdown of the other. Anyway, so, but this conflict between the low energy internal symmetries actually can be traced back to the non Einstein nature of this lattice translation symmetry, which uh, has been discussed in series of papers like uh, mentioned and uh, also paper by Professor Xu and others. But why we care about anomaly in this low energy field theory? That's because anomaly can in general diagnose the incapability of the systems. I will give you examples to illustrate this idea. The point here is once we have a potential anomaly in the low energy theory, we can match this low energy anomaly with some quantity in the lattice model. And we call such a quantity the Lipschitz matrix index, which can be used to characterize the phase or the incapability of this lattice model. Here's more about this the idea of anomaly. So the anomaly or the mix anomaly between the low energy two sim the two lower energy internal symmetries is a topological quantity independent of interparticle interactions at either UV and IR scale. That's because anomaly is preserved on the Archie flow, which uh, comes from the argument of the Terhoft's paper. At la la large scale, the Lipschitz index, which is matched from this low energy anomaly, only depends on a quantity associated with the unsigned symmetry of the degrees of freedom within a unit cell because we have translation symmetry. So let's see the examples. The first example is about one dimensional electron systems. And uh, there is a uh, corresponding Lipschitz matrix theory. Any one dimensional electron lattice system cannot be a trivial insulator if the feeding per unit cell is fractional and if the lattice translation symmetry and charge conservation are strictly imposed. And this can be argued by some topological consideration and by, for example, the paper by Masaki, Yamalaka, and uh, Athlik, and also Masaki itself. Um, okay, so begin. I try. Uh, I'm trying to give you the the minimum input about this anomaly argument for this incapability of the many body models. So the simplest model is the time binding model of one dimensional spinless fermions with this Hamptonian and. Uh, Okay, the U1 symmetry is just the charge. Uh, U1 symmetry and the translation symmetry is described by this one side shift. Okay, this is the band structure of this model, which is uh, well understood. And the feeding here is defined as the ratio of the total number of charges and the system size. In the continuous limit, uh, we can expand the system around the Fermi C or the Fermi point. And uh, the low energy theory is described by the Dirac fermions. How about the symmetries in the low, at low energy? As U1 is still the U1 phase transformation, the translation, as I mentioned, <coughs> becomes an internal symmetry. <coughs> and not let this translation symmetry act on these two 
chiral mode in a different way. There's a sigma z here. So this is the source of the chiral anomaly. By the way, so if we the system is half filled, we have a uh, effective internal symmetries, uh, the Z2 symmetry corresponding this translation symmetry because KF is pi over two, so and the total, total symmetry is described by this U1 times Z2. But for generic feeding, including the incommensurator case, we have this U1 times Z. As I say, this is, is an integer group. Sorry, I, mean, I probably missed something simple, but why, why did you say that mu equal one half uh, is particular? Oh, this is just example. OK, so you don't need to be at one half. Yeah, we can have general feeling. Okay, okay, yes, sorry, yes. Sorry. So the point here is a low entry. We have two symmetries, two internal symmetries. One behaves, beha behaves as a vector symmetry, while the other one behaves, be behaves as an actual symmetry or a chiral symmetry, as we have seen. And uh, so be because there are both chi vector and the actual symmetry in the theory, we have the actual or chiral or mixed anomaly in such kind of effective theory. That is the partition function of the theory in the presence of, for example, this vector or electromagnetic field is in general not invariant under these actual transformations described here. And there is the exotic phase specifying this mixed anomaly. And note that this phase can be characterized by the feeding and the lattice model. What's the physical meaning of this anomaly? And I are, if this new or the feeding is not an integer, which means this effective theory is anomalous, then it must be either gapless, of course, this is Dirac fermion, or when perturbed by some symmetric interactions, the theorem can be driven, driven to a uh, gap phase in general, but with spontaneous symmetry breaking. Correspondingly, a UV scale, or going back to this lattice Systems, if the feeding new per unit cell is not integral, the system does not allow a unique gap ground state. It must be in a gapless phase, like the Dirac fermion describing this uh, the critical phase of the electron system. Or if we add in some, like the nearest neighbor interaction to the system, the, the large system can possibly be gapped, but there is associated with some, uh, for example, translation broken, breaking. And this is nothing but the lipschitz man theory for electron systems. For example, a half field spin as fermion is ingapable. For example, if we consider this uh, nearest neighbor interactions, when this coupling is quite large, the system can be met, is gapped, but spontaneously break the translation. Or you can say there's a dimerized phase for this electron systems. So half field is incapable with res respecting both U1 and the translation symmetries. And this is concerned with this anomaly factor, new, which is not a, an integer. But you can consider two copies of the 
system, or you can consider spin four systems, and uh, the total filling is added up to one, which is an integer, or equivalently, the long range theory of this lattice model is a knife free. This implies the system should be gapable. For example, if we consider the Hamiltonian with the inclusion of this <coughs> coupling between spin up and spin down fermions, and uh, not, not, not let this uh, coupling respect the translation symmetry and, of course, the charge conservation. And when this coupling becomes very large, the system can be trivially gapped with a unique gap ground state. So an integer feeding or an integer anomaly factor signals the, in the gapability or ingapability of the system. OK. But actually, we can have this anomaly without going to any specific model. We just know what what is the what are the symmetries in the in the systems. For example, this electron system, we know there's a charge U1 symmetry and also translation or in the low energy is the described by this integer Z symmetries. Once we know there are such kind of symmetries, we can have this uh, mixed anomaly represented by an S1 number. By anomaly matching, this gives us an LSM index uh, described by this total charge per unit cell module integers. This is very important because in the following example, I will try to, I will uh, compute this anomaly without referring any specific model. And the, this anomaly can actually be computed by some uh, mathematical tools like the Cohomology or a more so sophisticated, like Cohomology theory, anyway. So uh, let me give you a summarize of this section. Incapability for more general systems, which can be described by the Tomonaga Latinjo liquid, can be checked by bosonization, because we are lucky to use this technical in one dimension. And uh, this check uh, agrees with the analysis from anomaly consideration. In summary, we have this Lipschitz thesis, which is states here. I will not repeat again. And uh, uh, this agrees with previous works. What time is it? OK, 20 minutes. Oh, any questions? OK. So now, uh, let, let's move to the spin systems, or generic spin systems. Uh, here's the reminder of this SU2 case. Uh, if the antiframe spin chain has a half integral per inner cell, then the, cis, the spin system cannot have a trivial or unique gap ground state in the thermodynamic limit. And as I told you, this has been generalized to uh, generic uh, spin systems, but still uh, quite specific. For example, in this paper by Atlick and Liu, they, they can prove ma in a mathematical rigorous way this SU2N spin chain cannot have a unique gap ground state if this young tabular representation per site, which is a generalization of the spin in general case, 
and the system with this representation per side is uh, if this representation has an odd number of box and if all these translation and the spin rotation symmetry are respect the system cannot be a trivial gap state but I will say this is not for the most general case because they consider SU 2 n and the odd number of box there are some technical problem to generalize these two the most general case but with our approach we can give a more complete answer to this question that is for generic XUN chain with any young tabular representations per site with all these symmetries our approach can give a complete answer and a typical example of this general SUN system is given for example the Heisenberg antifermic medical model described here here this generic spin satisfy this uh, the algebra relations for n equals 2 the most uh, well-known case is just the usual Heisenberg spin model and the least young tabulous box correspond to the spins of the of this SU2 model for n large for generic n we can have a very complicated young diagram and this young diagram has one one correspondence to these young tabular representations of SUN spin for example this is some uh, non-trivial young diagrams of some SUN spin system with n larger than 2 okay and we will try to solve or not solve answer this question by a non matching argument as I say here I will not go to some particular model like Heisenberg model or AKOT whatever models to to compute the anomaly in the low interface instead I compute this anomaly in the low interface associated with both spin rotation and the translation symmetries by this group called module considerations anyway I will skip the details but the the result is that the mixed anomaly is represented by a module n integer and actually this uh, anomaly from the constellation of SPD phases is also discussed in these papers and the physical f uh, by matching this mixed anomaly and low energy which is a ZN number we obtain this Lipschitz matrix index described by number of young tablets box per inner cell mod n let's see some simple examples n equals 2 so this Lipschitz matrix index is given by is evaluated as 2s mod 2 remember this s is the spin corresponding to the number of box in young in a young diagram and the you will see when s equals odd integer oh when s is half integral this i2 is an odd number which is non-trivial module 2 where s is an integer this I2 is an even number and uh, it's a uh, trivial module 2 and this is exact the Lipschitz matrix phases for this SU2 spin systems 
for more general case, SU two n if you or SU n with n being even number, the Lipschitz index we defined uh, is not does is not a trivial number if the Young table box is an odd number. This agree with the Lipschitz mass athletic theory states here, right? If the Young table box has an odd number of box, then the system cannot have a unit gap ground state. Okay, so in some sense, we answer the question one, given any last model with these symmetries, we can determine if the system is trivial or not. That is, if the system can have a unique gap ground state by looking at its Lipschitz mass index. But we are not just satisfied with this result. Actually, we have once we have the value of the Lipschitz matrix for a systems, we can further use it to constrain the low energy properties. As I say, this comes the value of the Lipschitz index we defined by match to the anomaly in the low energy theories. We can use it to uh, have some restriction of either the ground state degeneracy if the system is in a gap phase or the possible university class if the system is in a critical phase. And uh, the ground state degeneracy must satisfy this formula. Here, GCD is the greatest common divisor. And let me give you an example. So, for n equals 2, this is the uh, most uh, well known case. So, the ground state degeneracy must belong to this n is 2. the greatest common divisor of I2 and the 2 times some, the n is a natural number, some integer. Anyway. And uh, if you remember, I2 is given by 2s times spin. So, this is equals to GCD 2S2, right? If we have half integral spin, so this give you one. So eventually, GCD must be a multiple of two if the system is in a gap phase. For example, the Marjandal Gash model, we have dimerized ground state. And uh, for integral spin, the ground state can be any integers. Of course, this include the unique gap ground states, like the Heisenberg and the Fermatics model of spin one. So this is the case for the gap state that we can use the LSM index to constrain the ground state degeneracy. Just to be sure I understand, so here, uh, in which case are you considering the ground state degeneracy? In the gapable case or in gapable? I'm not 
try and... Sorry? So in what situation are you in when you consider here the ground state degeneracy? If the system is in a gap state, in a gap phase. So you are in a gapable, co I mean, with respect to the LSM index, are you in a gapable? Model this, or this uh, the idea of gapability or ingapability mm -hmm. is for a class of Hamiltonian, which can be gapless or gapped. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, if we are, for example, we are focused on a Purdue gap phase, then the index can say something about the ground state degeneracy, like the Hessenberg model or AKOT model. But of course, we can the the the, the class of a uh, Hamiltonian can be in a critical phase, right? Like the BB model with some specific parameters. And uh, in this case, our index can constrain the possible university class and knowledge. For example, the most natural critical phase of a spin system is given is described by this with zoomino witten comfort field theory with some level. And uh, because this sim the system uh, respects the translation symmetry and knowledge, we also have this uh, translation representation on the matrix value G in this with zoomino witten theory. And this translation is specified by some number n, mod, mod n. And once we have an index here, by another matching, the low energy theorem should also match this index by this formula. K is the label, n is, the, is described here. And this must be sat satisfied, mo modular n. And actually, this Km is the mixed anomaly in the with zoomino witten theory, which I will briefly discuss here. Uh, anyway, so given a with zoomino witten conform field theory here, here this gamma is the with zoomino terms, and the uh, K is a label. Because the last muscle model has both spin rotation and the translation symmetry, the knowledge with Zuma witten theorem also has this spin rotation, which is described by this PSU and vector symmetry, act on the, in this way, and also translation symmetry, which behave as an actual symmetry on G. And because, again, there are both vector and actual symmetries, there might be a mixed chiral actual anomaly of the series. And uh, we found this chiral anomaly of this with Zuna witten theorem is characterized by this phase. Uh, because you, you are familiar with the chiral anomaly in Dirac fermion theory, here we can use a similar uh, method to compute the anomaly by representing this with zoom no written to some fermion theory with sketch field. Anyway, but eventually we have this anomaly phase. This can be done by, for example, Fujikawa method. And the anomaly can be traced back to the non invariant or the Jac Jacobian of the major of the fermions. <coughs> and our result agrees with no example in previous studies of generic SU model. For example, this SU3 trimer model with a fundamental representation per site. The ground state is a trimer state, of course. This is the name of the trimer model. And uh, our index is evaluated as 
just one bus. So one module three, and the ground state degeneracy formula here. This, this one is evaluated as three times integers. So this is satisfied. And for this SU3 AKOT model, because there are three bugs in a unit cell, the index is three module three or zero module three. And again, the ground state integers can be any integers satisfying the formula we get. And uh, maybe this is a more non-trivial case for this SU6 model considered it in this paper. And uh, say if you have this uh, seven-dimensional representation, Young table representation, described by this Young diagram, and uh, the deep shoot matrix index is e easy to compute. We just count the number of the box. Also, this uh, representation is complicated. And uh, it turns out this index is uh, equal to 3 module 6. And again, the ground state degeneracy is given by maybe I, I can. So I6 equals 3 mod 6. And the ground state degeneracy is equals n equals 6. And the GCD of I6 is 3. And n times some integer. And in the this is 2, right? And th this is consistent with. Uh, their result, which predict the ground state is some valence bound state with twofold degeneracy. And for this, these are for gap phases. On the other hand, for critical phases, our prediction works well. For for example, this integral top junction top junction model with spin three half. This is the young tail corresponding young tail box, and the index is evaluated as one module two. This has to match the anomaly in the low energy SU two level three with Zumino Witten conform field theory, and the mixed anomaly is evaluated as k times n. K is 3, M is 1. So mixed anomaly is uh, given by 3 mod 2 or 1 mod 2. And again, this match with this index. And uh, OK, this, there are several examples, but I will skip them. Maybe the last example is about these two leg data systems. So the young table representation can be uh, present in this way. This is a tensor product of two fundamental representations. And uh, even in this case, our index can be evaluated. And uh, this equal to 2 modulus 3. We just counted the total number of the box. And again, this agree with this low energy SU3 level 1 with Zumino Witten theory. Sure, sure. Soon? Yeah, yeah, I will be. Continue finish okay. soon, yeah. OK, this is just some summary. OK, so if a spin model, if a SUN spin model with both spin rotation and translation symmetry and has a natural leaf juice matter index, that is the total number of young table box per unit cell is not divisible by n, the system must have either degenerate ground states satisfy the formula we gave or gap excitations. This gap excitation include a ferromagnetic phase. And 
also the critical phase. And uh, if the logic critical theorem is given by this SUN with Zumer Witten theory, the anon must be matched by index. Two means. Okay. Finally, I want to discuss the symmetry enlargement. Although SUN with Zumer Witten is the most general, most natural dual and critical phase of an SUN model. Sometimes it's possible to have symmetry enlargement, which can be enhanced in the large Hamiltonian or can be emerged purely in low energy. And in, even in this case, our index can also constrain the possible symmetry enlargement in this way. For example, an SU2 spin chain with half integral spin per unit cell does not admit this SU n plane with zoom and with theory for any other integer n plane. This is because so I2 n equals 2 and uh, n plane is some number larger than 2. Whatever. So this must be satisfied, mod 2. So you can see if we have spin, for example, 1 half, <coughs> and I2 equals 1, mod 2. So if we want this equation to be satisfied, n plane must be an e even number. So this rule out the possibility of at uh, n plane with zoom with a theory. This explains why SU3 symmetry can only be found in integer spin models. For example, the human life suzerain model. Okay, so more on this uh, human life suzerain model, this spin one, SU2 model can be re expressed in terms of this SU3 <coughs> spin system with a fundamental representations. While the original index is given by I2 equals 0 mod 2, in fact, we can have a final index I3 evaluated as 1 mod 3 because we are in a fundamental representation. Although there are two, there are two kinds of index, but both are consistent with the existence of the SU3 level one with Zuno with ten critical phase. Okay, and I just recap the diagram of our approach, and uh, I will stop here. Thank you. Yes. Can you map that to? You, you know, mean? Can you can you can you can you, you know uh, map that to uh, Lipschitz Mario theorem and say that uh, it must be gaseous? Let's consider. You mean, for example, Tabla Chen Bob Chen model has this as you do two level two. Yeah, I forgot. About the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. You know, by tuning up to a bi quadratic quadratic term actually. Is that yes, really yes, yes, yeah. yes. And actually, the uh, number is. The, the theory is anon free. So, the I, uh, because k is 2, right? Level is 2. Yeah, level is 2. And uh, so there's no anomaly? There's no anomaly. Okay. And the, the box is, and the last model is 2. So, 0 and a 0, of course, match. In, the w uh, in this case, we cannot predict the gap list case because our constraint is quite fundamental. Not Subject to specific model. Sorry, but, but, but that SO level 2 could avoid is the phase transition between two phases in, of the spin one chain, right? Yes. Which, which, which two phases are there again? Right? It's the dimerized phase and another is the. Let me. Uh, 
sorry. This okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> time rise face and the, the no no the hotel face and the time rise face. Yes. Well, but um, so you're saying that point in principle can be avoided. Uh, no, uh, I would just say our index i two is trivial. And uh, for dimerized phase, the ground state is 2, right? But our, our formula says the ground state can be any integer. So dimerized phase is, is agree with this formula. And the critical theorem has a number, it's trivial, which also agree with this index. Right, but based on the phase diagram, it's a dimerized phase, so how does the phase transition, so that transition cannot be avoided, though, because it's symmetric gradient. Yes. Somehow there's uh, some other some some other reason why why that point cannot be is is incapable in some way. Uh, there must be some reason that point cannot be gapped because actually it's a phase transition, right? It's a phase. It's an ordinary Langdon phase transition or something. Yeah, it, uh, but uh, our uh, incapability means we have to respect the symmetry. Sure, we, we do respect the, the transmission symmetry, right? So and in this case. I w the, the model is capable. It's capable. Uh, the model is, but that's a critical point. Yeah, yeah, that's a critical point, but we can tune this model and. So you can shift that critical point, you're saying? Yes, you yes, yes. That, make that point in the whole damn phase. Yeah, I'm not saying we rule out this gap, this phase, but uh, we just say something about this capability.